Hello once again, dear children. As promised, we're looking at a reflex arc. Now, reflex arc is the pathway taken by an impulse in bringing about a response to a stimulus. In other words, in bringing about a reflex action. What then is a stimulus? Here's a new term I've introduced to you. A stimulus is anything that causes you to react. So for example, putting your hand on a hot plate, you will react by moving your hand away or smelling a delicious food that mom is cooking, you will react by salivating. So this pathway that is taken by the impulse to bring about the reaction is called a reflex arc. Now to remember the reflex arc, there is a, an easy mnemonic that I teach the children. And the mnemonic goes by, goes as follows, and that is Roy, stop calling me. Okay, so let's look at what it stands for. Okay, Roy, so there's an R, so R O Y, Roy, and the next part of the mnemonic is stop. S-T-O-P. You can make your own mnemonic, my dear children. Stop. The next part of the mnemonic is calling. Okay, Roy, stop calling. And the last part of the mnemonic, me, but M, sorry. M as a letter on its own, and E as a letter on its own. So M. And finally, the last part of the mnemonic. Yes, E. Roy, stop calling me. Now, what does this stand for? Okay. The R stands for the receptor. So in this case, if that is my sensory neuron, and you've already recognized it as a sensory neuron, this F would be the receptor because the receptor senses a stimulus and creates the impulse. So two functions of a receptor, sensing a stimulus and creating an impulse. R, receptor. Stop has got an S. So who takes the impulse further? The sensory neuron. So S for sensory neuron. So the sensory neuron takes the impulse up to the spinal cord. And at the spinal cord or in the spinal cord, it will meet up with the next neuron, C, connecting neuron, also known as interneuron. So when it meets up, it doesn't actually touch. There is a gap between the end of the sensory neuron and the beginning of the connecting neuron. That gap, which is indicated by D in this diagram, is a synapse. So the synapse provides a unidirectional movement of the impulse. In other words, the impulse knows to travel in that particular direction. Okay, so once again, this is our sensory neuron carrying the impulse and who takes the second, who takes the baton from the sensory neuron? The connector neuron, it's like a relay. And then the connector neuron will pass the baton onto M. Yes, motor neuron. So there's your motor neuron. And the motor neuron motors down and passes the baton at the end line, or comes to the end line with the effector. So A would be the effector. In this case, if F was a heat receptor in your skin, the effector here would be a muscle in your hand to move your hand away. So this pathway from the receptor to the effector to bring about a response to the stimulus is called a reflex arc. The pathway is a reflex arc. And the action that is carried out by the effector is the reflex action. So remember, reflex actions are rapid, involuntary responses. Rapid is one word. Involuntary means you don't think about it. Responses to a stimulus received by a receptor or a sense organ. 
So it's a rapid involuntary response to a stimulus received by a receptor or a sense organ. So there we go, my darling. So we have, we have seen a reflex arc and several questions are based on Roy, stop calling me this pathway. Of course, to be able to write out this entire reflex arc and detailing the pathway taken by the impulse is given up to seven or eight marks in the examination. So this comes as part of your theory, my dear children. Learn this off by heart. And I'll show you a spinal cord just now to show you which pathway is followed by the sensory neuron or is taken by the motor neuron during a reflex arc. But before I come to that, let's look at these questions. Okay. First question, name the path represented in the diagram. Of course, the answer would be reflex arc. Identify the type of neuron represented by B because we know the structure right now without even thinking is almost like reflex to us right now. This is the motor neuron. C, connector, small thing, and E is your sensory neuron. Give the letter only, follow the instruction, one mark of the receptor, F, because that's the one that creates the impulse that will be taken by the sensory neuron, effector A. Give the letter and name of the region where the impulse is transmitted chemically. So remember I said to you, the sensory neuron doesn't touch the connecting neuron, there is a gap. That is because from the sensory neuron, from these ends here, from these terminals, the neurotransmitter substance or the chemical substance is released into the gap and then picked up by the dendrites of the connector neuron. So that gap is D, the synapse. The part that has an insulating function is G, the myelin sheath. Okay, so let's now, let's look at the spinal cord, either this diagram or the one next to it. But since we are here, let's look at this one, okay? Remember I said to you, I'm gonna show you the pathway taken by the sensory neuron. So if this is a candle, your receptor over here would be a heat receptor found in your skin that will sense the heat. Remember, a reflex action happens without thinking. So you first initially feel the stimulus. Pain is not a stimulus, my darlings. Pain is a sensation. So when you're feeling pain, it is because from the spinal cord, impulses go to your cerebrum, and that's when you feel the sensation of pain. Please understand that. When you're first taking your hand away, it's responding to the heat from the candle. When you feel the pain, it's because impulses have moved from the spinal cord to your brain to register the sensation of pain. Is that clear? So there we go. So then once the receptor senses the heat and creates an impulse, which neuron is gonna be taking it up to the spinal cord? So this now represents our spinal cord. This is our spinal nerve. So the identical structure is on the other side because from every part of the spinal cord, there's a pair of nerves. There are 31 pairs of nerves that come from the spinal cord. So here, this is one nerve. And on the other side, so this will be one pair of nerves, identical structure. So if I had to elongate this, let me show you elongating that particular thing, just for you to be able to see it. If I can draw this, draw. So baby, so this one here would be like that, going there. Sorry about this jacket drawing. So there we go. So the identical structure would appear here. Are you with me? Okay, forgive me for a beautiful drawing. So let's go back. So there's your sensory neuron. Now remember the sensory neuron has got a dendrite and an axon. Dendrite carries the impulse towards the cell body. So there's the cell body of the sensory neuron lying there. So this thin fiber going up here is the dendrite of the sensory neuron. And it's going through this part of the spinal nerve 
So the spinal nerve breaks up into two roots, we call them. Dorsal root, ventral root. Remember, dorsal is always at the top. Ventral at the bottom. So the spinal nerve, this is the dorsal root. That is the ventral root. So the dendrite of the sensory neuron goes up the dorsal root. This is the cell body of the sensory neuron and comes right up to what is called the gray matter of the spinal cord. So with the spinal cord, the gray matter is on the inside, white matter is on the outside. With the brain, the gray matter is on the outside, white matter on the inside. So remember the spinal cord has also got those three membranes, those meninges that cover the brain. They continue from the brain right down to the spinal cord for protection. So I'm um, digressing, let's go back. So the receptor created the impulse. The dendrite of the sensory neuron carries the impulse up the dorsal root of the spinal nerve to the spinal cord. And in the gray matter, darlings, that sensory neuron will pass the impulse onto the second neuron and that's the connecting neuron. So the label A that you see there is the connecting neuron. See, they showed it to you on that side because the identical thing is happening on this side. So don't get confused. That is your connecting neuron and that gap. So via a synaptic contact, the impulse is then transmitted to the connecting neuron. And then via a synaptic cont contact, here's another synapse here, the impulse is passed to the third neuron, and that is your motor neuron. So the motor neuron, from coming from the motor neuron there from the cell body with the dendrites would have picked up the impulse. And what part of the motor neuron will be coming down this root here? This is the axon of the motor neuron. Remember, axon has A for a way. So there's the axon of the motor neuron motoring down to the muscle to tell the muscle, please contract now so I can move my finger away so I won't get burnt and thus preventing injury. So this pathway from the receptor right through here to the effector, that's the reflex arc. So notice to be able to explain this, that this sensory neuron, the goes through the dorsal root and then makes synaptic contact with the connecting neuron, which makes synaptic contact with the motor neuron and the motor neuron passes its impulse down through the ventral root until it eventually reaches the effector. Remember dorsal root of the spinal nerve, ventral root of the spinal nerve is just not roots of some tree. Okay, So you gotta say of the spinal nerve. So that, my darlings, is the little short note they'd be expecting you to know off by heart. So learn it off by heart. It's straightforward and it will be given as a level one question. So level one question, it's unforgivable that you will get it wrong. So let's look at some of the questions here. Give only the letter of the part that represents the effector. Of course, it will be E. Interneuron or connecting neuron will be A. And sensory neuron, it'll be, which one would it be, darling? Would it be D? Would it be C? Would it be B? Probably D is representing the receptor, so we'll go with C. Of course, that is the dendrite of the sensory neuron. Okay, done. Give the letter and name of the part in the diagram that is probably damaged if a person is able to detect the stimulus but cannot respond. So which neuron, which neuron causes you to eventually respond? Which neuron, whilst you're thinking about that? Let me just clear up all my lines here, okay? Remember that mnemonic that we said, Roy, stop calling me, okay? Right. So which neuron? It is the motor neuron. So if the motor neuron is damaged, means the impulse will not reach the effector, and therefore the effector would not be able to respond to the stimulus. Okay, so you feel the stimulus, but you cannot respond. So give the letter and name, it'll be F motor neuron. State if the nerve impulse travels from D to E or E to D. Mm, is it from D? So D would be the receptor, isn't it? So 
So therefore, for this answer, sensory neurons, it will be C. That is why it's so important in, I think in any paper, but especially a life science paper, read the questions first before you attempt answering because the questions give you a clue as to what is shown in the diagram. So always read the question through very carefully. And reading time in life sciences is of the utmost importance. So will it go from D to E? Of course, we know that D is a receptor. So it goes, Roy, stop calling me. So it will go from D to E, the effect. I hope that explains this entire little short question on sorry, short section on the spinal cord and reflex section. Notice there are several other questions which are found here. So later when I'm doing a complete review of all the sections, I'll be looking at some choice questions, but kindly complete these questions. They come from your composite revision booklet. It is with the questions which are provided to you by the government. So complete these questions and have them ready and I'm sure your teachers will be going through those questions. So God bless you and happy learning until I see you again.